Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. And it's all about Susan Corvo Design. We are excited to have her back here to talk about all the work she does. She's from Fairfield, Connecticut, can work with you anywhere. SusanCorvo.com. We're talking today about redesigning our beautiful kitchens. But let's first get to know Susan a little bit for those new listeners out there. She specializes in interior design, decorating, remodeling, you name it, she does it. Susan, I'll let you do the introduction. How are you? Good. Thanks, Jill. How are you? Happy Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's yeah, um, Day to you as well oh, yeah. and to all of our listeners. It, yes. So um, I, I am owner and president of Susan Corver Redesign, and I specialize in interior design, interior decorating, redesign, remodeling, definite focus on kitchens and baths lately. Um, my belief is that uh, you should have a beautiful home and a functional home, and especially in your kitchen, you can get your dream kitchen, whether you're going to renovate and gut, or sometimes it's just new cabinet doors, painting, and new countertops. Got it. Well, it's exciting to have you here, and let's just point out the website, susancorvo.com, S-U-S-A-N-C-O-R-V-O. You can reimagine your world, and our passion uh, really is for you to love your home. So check out the website, and uh, check out some of the testimonials, some of the beautiful videos and portfolio pictures that she has. And today is, I think, a very huge topic. I'm interested in this. A lot of us are. (laughs) It's the kitchen, because I find we spend most of our days and nights in the kitchen. In the Susan, kitchen. explain this yeah. one a little bit. <laughs> well, you know, so it's when, especially when you're Italian, we live in the kitchen. I mean, it, you know, the whole world, every time you have a party, everyone's congregating in your kitchen. And it really is the heart of the home. It's where people like to gather and congregate and everyone likes to be helping each other, you know, cook. So where do you start? What do you do? You have to think about, you know, if you have a really old kitchen, like, you know, the 1950s cabinets, you know, saying, no, I really want to gut. I want my dream kitchen. Then, you know, you got to start with thinking about, I'm going to gut. And what does that mean? You know, and I always start with, what's your dream? I always ask everybody to give me either a Pinterest board or some pictures that they say that they see in a magazine or online or on house and say, oh, my God, I love this. This is my dream. And I work from there because I like to start with what they want and what they absolutely dream about and tell them then what we can fit into that kitchen. So, you know, everybody has a different sense. Some type like farmhouse. Some people want more modern. Some people want, you know, more transitional or, or traditional, which is which, whichever you like. It's about finding out what it is you love and then making it happen and within your space without necessarily having to add on, which costs a lot more money. Got so it. that's kind of where I start with people. Got it. And let me just ask you, uh, as far as the, the kitchen, is everyone into this open design floor plan now? Are people realizing they don't really use the dining room as much and they want to expand and open up the kitchen <laughs> or maybe combine both of them? Yeah, and I've got, that's probably the number one thing we've been doing. I have a dining room. I never use it right now. I'm painting a piece in there because no, no one ever goes in your dining room. So I always say if you have the ability in your home to open up your kitchen. Now, when that happens, it does take away a wall of cabinetry. So you have to really think about where else you're going to put that cabinetry. Most of the time, if I take out that wall, I have room to put a an island. Um, it can sometimes be tight, but it depends. Um And so if we open up the wall, we'll put an island, and an island really gives you a lot of storage and a lot of cabinets. So that really, I mean, everyone's saying, let's just open it up. Why do you need two dining tables? (laughs) You could have one and be more effective. I agree. I'm loving this whole open concept plan. So where do you start? I mean, there's so much to the kitchen and what people want. And uh, yep. I know I have your, your your notes here. And by the way, I've been reading these for a while because the past few weeks we've been working together. Hope you guys have been tuning in. We had some great podcasts in regards to, hey, if you're moving, right, into that new home, yep. how and what you should do creating outdoor spaces was last week. We also touched upon uh, decorating a room in general. And now it's the undertaking of the kitchen renovation. So where do you start when designing a kitchen and how do you select the design you're going to love for years to come? So one of the things I tell people is stay a little bit transitional and neutral because don't pick something crazy that you think, you know, 10 years down the road, why did I pick this color? I can't stand it anymore. Or why did I pick this counter? It's a little too wild now. I want something different. So I make sure that we kind of look at, first of all, I, go, I tell you, I'm not sure how big your kitchen is, but everybody has things stored elsewhere. 
And that's the biggest thing. I always, the first thing I say is, all right, I want to know what you have stored in the basement, what you have stored in the hall closet, all the things you have everywhere else but in your kitchen. And people laugh. They're like, oh, well, how do you know that? I'm like, because we all do it. You know, if we don't have a big enough kitchen, we go figure out where we can store things in the basement or in another closet. I said, and the goal of a kitchen is usually having a taller cabinet that goes to the ceiling. Even if you can't reach that top shelf, at least we can store things up there that you don't use. So I make sure everyone brings everything out, tells me what they need. Are they a big cook? Are they a big baker? Um, Do they really want an island? Is that really their focus? Um, And then, you know, what type of cooking they want to do? Do they, are they a huge cook that they want some double ovens? Do they want a cooktop or is, are they into a big, you know, Viking or wolf range? And so those, I start with a, a ton of questions and sit down and really talk about how they plan on functioning in their kitchen. You know, because some people are like, look, I'm not even a big cook. I don't care. I just, I, I'll go with a slide in range and give me a microwave for the kids and I'm happy. Got and it. so therefore that, that makes that decision then where you start your design. And when does it make sense to update versus renovate, would you say? So it depends how old your home is. If you have a cabinet, you know, if you have those older cabinets with that soffit above, and they're, they're – because they're, really the cabinets only came in 30-inch, so that's why they have that soffit to cover the space to collect dust. If you have older cabinets that aren't solid wood or really small, and if you're gutting and saying, I'm opening walls, well, then we're going to have to really renovate the whole kitchen. But if you have a house, probably 1990s and older, and you have some really nice cabinets, but you're just not happy with the countertops or they're getting a little bit chipped, you know, but the flow is okay, then I'd say, hey, let's just paint. Let's put new countertops and new backsplash and give it a refresh. Because, and I had a client here in Fairfield that had that. It's a beautiful home, beautiful kitchen. I mean, incredible kitchen. But nothing was soft closed. And the cabinets were starting to kind of get chipped a little bit. So we just painted. We put soft clothes hinges. We added some organizers underneath the cabinets because it was just some plain shelving. And that was it. I mean, no matter what we have done, we probably wouldn't have changed it dramatically because it was so big. So that's when I say let's just do a little resurfacing, refacing versus a complete remodel. Got it. Got it. Well, thank you. And then, of course, you got to look at the budget. You got to look at all that and put everything on the table. And, um, yep. no, but where does it start? Do you have to, what about flooring? Because you're opening up the kitchen. Are people also doing the floors and then the floor that it leads to the den, to the living room? Does I don't have to be picked up. <laughs> it, it becomes a huge yep. project, right? Yeah. It, it, so I will always tell you one room leads to another. And <laughs> anybody that does their kitchen, it leads to every other room because all of a sudden they have this new shiny kitchen and they feel like the rest of the house looks drab. But one of, the, one of the very important things about flooring is, you know, I always say hardwood really is the best in the kitchen. It's softer on your back and your feet. Tile is not forgiving. If you're on your feet a long time and you're on a tile floor, your back is going to be miserable. Um, but with wood flooring, if you're taking it and say you already have wood flooring and you're like, oh, great. But what happens is when we start breaking down walls, we have to then refinish almost the whole basic first floor because then it doesn't match. So you really are then sanding your floors and refinishing them downstairs, especially if you're opening up to the dining room. You usually end up finishing the kitchen, the dining room, and maybe even the foyer. Got it. Now, can I just ask you a random question? Believe it or not, my house yeah. has the, the, the kitchen floor is higher than the dining room and living room. I guess they kind of renovated the house before I moved in, and they did it the wrong way. They put the wood floors uh, down in the living room, the dining room. But now you have a kitchen with tile floors, and there's that little, like, um, marble stone that kind of yep. dips down. Like, that is crazy because now I have, <laughs> it's so confusing. you got to do one or the other, lift it up all around or push it down. Nope. <laughs> And actually, I'll tell you exactly what they did. They actually did not remove the original flooring and just went over it to oh. make it easy. So I bet if you have hardwood everywhere else, they either had linoleum in there. It depends on when your house was built. Or they just decided they didn't feel like taking it up and they went right over it. So you could probably take up that tile and get back to either a hardwood most likely hardwood if it's a little bit higher. They probably just put it right over. And get back to the regular level so the whole house is level yep. at this point. Okay, so that may be less of a yep. project. I was worried, like, oh, my goodness. Now, if I do my kitchen one day, do I have to lift all the other floors? Or you're right, if I lift up that tile, nope. it is higher. That's probably yep. – well, well, Yeah. All right. Yeah, all right. What we would do is take up – so people say, oh, I want to just change my floor in the kitchen. But most of the time, your floor will run underneath the cabinets. You want to check maybe your floor doesn't run under your cabinets. 
Oh, it does. Did it you does. Go, it does. Okay. So they basically just went over it. They wanted to be eat. They didn't want to take it up. It could have been wood. It could have just been an old vinyl with, um, you know, with something that was just plywood underneath. But you can easily take it up and make your floors match. Good. 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 Next time when I'm ready to do that. Uh, thank you. <laughs> I was worried about that. You're welcome. All right. Sorry. I'm on a tangent, tangent here. Let's talk no, about. Okay. Um, so the flooring, you're saying the best one would be that, that hardwood for the kitchen. And they offer so many different colors now and so beautiful. And is it true you can, sa- you can sand down a true wood floor and you could restain it if you want to make it a different color? Mm-hmm. Yep. So if your floor is either white oak or red oak, most likely, um, depending on when your house was built. And then what you can do is, it, and if you're going to stand down the kitchen, you'll stand down probably your whole first floor if it's all wood, um, and if each of the boards run into each other. But what you can do is sand it down, and then you can decide, do I want to stay natural? Um, and even now, a big thing I've been doing is making it more Danish-looking, where they actually do a white stain on it. Like a white wash, yes. Wood. Yeah, like a white wash. Well, so, yeah. So all the white stain does is it stops it from yellowing and getting orange, and it keeps it looking more very neutral, very light. And I've done it in, like, three different houses now, and it looks beautiful. Um, Or you can go dark. I mean, a lot of people are using special walnut and going darker on their floors. I I do tell people to be careful because every scratch shows. If you have dogs and kids running around, you'll see every single scratch on a dark floor. But – those are kind of, yeah, you can just, you'll have to do your living room and dining room along with the kitchen, but, you know, it's just a beautiful look, and it makes the, it makes the whole house pop by having your floors redone. Great. So floors would be the first part of your process, and then does it go to cabinet options? What happens next? So when you just, first we design, I have a program called Chief Architects, and I actually design your kitchen, so you kind of like HGTV and Joanna Gaines, you can actually, well, I take you on a 3D walkthrough to show you exactly from the front door what it's going to look like to walk into your kitchen. Um, and I design it, each cabinet based on what your needs are. So do you need a mixer cabinet for your mixers or tomatoes? Um, how many pots and pans do you have? Do you have a lot of baking sheets? Do you need a cabinet that can be, baking sheets can stand up in or, or cutting boards? Um, I do a lot of drawers on the bottom so that, you know, you just open the drawer and there's your pots and pans. Um, I do some shelving on the top, but not a ton because um, – People have done the open shelving, and then they kind of regret that they're still looking at it all, and it gets dusty. Yeah. But we'll do a few open shelves as long as there's still some cabinet for things. Um, and from there, we decide from the cabinets what color. I mean, and, and really, as an education on cabinets, they're all a plywood box. Your lower-end cabinets, as long as they're plywood boxes and they're wood boxes, the reason why they might be a little less expensive is because they only offer three or four door styles and three or four colors. When you get up to 10, 15, 20 door styles in any color you imagine, that's more custom cabinetry. So there's a way to do a reasonable kitchen if you're willing to stay with a white or a gray or a wood look for not that much money because that's more of a, I wouldn't say lower end, but a less expensive because the the company itself doesn't manufacture 50 million styles. So it saves them on manufacturing costs. Got it. So you think, and color wise, you think a lighter color is better than, yeah. Neutral. I think it depends on your house. I, I think I, whites always whites will never go out of style. So you can always have a white kitchen and it's going to be beautiful. Um, you know, you could do an island in a different color. You could do a green or black or blue, um, and you could do a wood look in your kitchen depending on how much sun you get and you know how much how light it is and how big it is. You, it. A lot of natural woods are coming back in to do a more natural wood in the kitchen um, to make a, a more farmhouse look. Got it. Let me ask you a quick question. I have probably like builder's cabinets like from Lowe's or Home Depot. They're like a beige. But very quickly after four and a half years, the, you know, the, the cabinets we use most are all, you know, the, the, the paint is gone. And is that that's mm-hmm. obviously it's a cheap cabinet, I'm assuming. But, I mean, to undergo a kitchen renovation, that's my concern. Like, is there like, you know, the types of cabinets you buy that guarantee that it doesn't like chip off or no? I mean, is there certain materials that are no. better? There are some that are better than others, the finish on a cabinet. Usually the Home Depot brands are not that great, and they will stop. The the hinges will start falling off, and, you know, your paint will start chipping. It's a better quality cabinet that you get through it. Like someone like me, I have, you know, two, three different cabinet lines, is not going to chip off like that. You'll get some chipping, but I have a lot of people that I use to kind of do some touch-ups. Perfect. Like the garbage. Yeah. 
Good, good, good. All right. Thank you so much. <laughs> so let's talk yeah. about those cabinet options. Continue. Go ahead. Yeah. So one of the things people think about custom cabinetry or versus out-of-the-box type cabinet, cabinet makers, most of them make cabinets in increments of three. So you get 9-inch, 12-inch, 15, 18. If someone tells you, oh, you need an 11-inch cabinet, well, that's going to be pretty expensive. That's a custom cabinet. You can design, I can design any kitchen using the basics in, the, in, you know, 3, 6, 12, 15, 18, 33, 36, whatever. I can design any kitchen. I do not have to necessarily get to an 11-inch or, you know, 16 or 17-inch cabinet and be very custom. So, you know, that's a big thing to think about when you're, you know, and you always want to make sure – that even if you're working with your contractor, that you get somebody who is a really good kitchen designer that understands flow of kitchen, how you're going to use it, and asks you the questions. Because just putting cabinets together doesn't mean they're going to function for you. Yeah, true. You know, you really need to know how do you like to use your spices? Do you want them in a drawer? Do you want them in a cabinet? What do you want them to look like? Because that's really important in your kitchen. I have so many people that have done kitchens, and then they're just not functional. They yeah. spend a fortune, and they're like, yeah, but it's not only really functional. I said, well, did they just put cabinets in and not ask you a lot of questions? And she's like, well, yeah. So it's really important. You want your designer to ask you a ton of questions and, and have it be someone, if you're a big cook, like I'm a huge cook. So I know I, I want a functional kitchen. Mm -hmm. I want things at my fingertips. I want things stored away. You know, I want access to everything. So I'm really particular when I do a kitchen that it has all the access you need. Got it. And if it's a small kitchen, how do you maximize storage space? Would you recommend doing the high cabinets that go up to the ceiling? Or are those kind of yep. hard because people don't use that space up there? They, that's where it gets confusing because then how do you get up to get there? <laughs> you need a stool all the time? Yeah. No, I always say, you know, go when you're in a challenging small space, go vertical. So I always tell everyone, go as vertical. Go as to the ceiling with your cabinets. Um if it's a small kitchen, I might find a closet somewhere that you may not use necessarily, or you can repurpose it to be the pantry um, so that all your food can be in one spot. I, I make sure that we have every inch of the space is actually accounted for in a small kitchen. And, and a lot of times in a smaller kitchen, I just did a cake. You know, the cakes usually have, you know, a small kitchen and then the living room right next door. We did open the wall up, and I gave her an island, and I gave her a, um, a pantry cabinet. And she's like, oh, my God, I feel like my kitchen's twice the size. And it's not, but that island just changed the way they live. And it's not an eat-in kitchen. There's no table in there. But the table's in the next room over, and they're like, this is perfect. We eat breakfast and lunch here every single day. Yeah. Awesome. Well, let me ask you this, Susan Corvo. Just tell us how we can reach out to you. Give us your best forms of contact. We'll take a break, and we'll talk more about, uh, you know, the kitchens, obviously, and maybe some current trends, what's going on there. And I know backsplashes are important. There, there's just so much to do. So let's uh, take that break. Remind us how we can reach out to you. If they can reach me, email me at Susan at SusanCorvo.com, or anytime give me a call, 203-536-0712. Perfect. All right, everyone, stay tuned. We'll be right back with more after the break. Don't go anywhere. Hey, you should move over. Red, right, return. Right, red, right, return. No, just red, right, return because you No, you're... I'm saying red, right, return, but then right to agree. Okay, but you're on the... I should have said correct. I know it's red, right, return, but... You're on the left and it's red, right, return. Red, right, return. Tides can turn quick on the water. Progressive has you covered as a leader in boat insurance. Get a quote today at Progressive.com. Oh, I was on the left. Right. Please stop talking. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Is your home ready for a new look? Would you love to work with an interior designer but think it's unaffordable? I'm Susan Corvo of Susan Corvo Redesign, and with my unique approach to interior design, you can live in a beautiful, functional home. Whether you need a whole house renovation, a custom designed kitchen, or assistance just choosing paint colors and window treatments, I offer flexible plans that work for you, your budget, and timeline. A beautiful home starts with what you already have and love. Let me help you reimagine your world. Learn more at SusanCorvo.com. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. And we are back with Susan Corvo talking about redesigning our kitchens here today. Again, SusanCorvo.com, undertaking kitchen renovations. So we were talking about the cabinets, uh, the style. What else is in store for us when we have to go down this road of kitchen renovations? 
So a big thing is your cabinet door. People want to know, do they want to have it? When we call full overlay, that means it sits outside the cabinet versus a cabinet door that sits inset within the cabinet. You actually get more space if you do a full overlay. Ah. People think, oh, more high end having your inset cabinet. Well, but you don't get as much storage space within the cabinet. So it definitely, if you have a 12-inch cabinet with full overlay versus an inset, you're going to get more room in full overlay. And when we talk about cabinet doors, you know, people think, oh, my God, how do I make a choice? Really, I always tell people stay very transitional, do a modified shaker, do something very simple that's never that's going to stand the test of time and never go out of style. Wow. And that's really the most important part in terms of, you know, picking your cabinet door, picking a color, and then you're designing it. And then from there, it's, what do I want for a kitchen counter? So you start with your cabinet, then you pick your kitchen counter, and then the backsplash. And again, I tell people, let's try to stay as neutral. I'd say the trend now is most people are doing a quartz countertop. Um, quartz tends to be a lighter color. Some lines in it look more like a marble, uh, depending on which one you get. It's very durable. Um, granite is always going to be the tried and true most durable in the market. You could put, you know, hot anything on granite. With, mm-hmm. with quartz, you still have to be a little bit careful. You're not putting a really hot pan on it. Um, But it is easy to clean. There's different ways to get anything out of it. Um, And it tends to be a lighter, more neutral um, color. And it's funny, people used to think quartz was less expensive, and now granite's the most least expensive stone you can use. Really? Yeah. Honestly, granite granite has gotten less expensive because it's what's design trends. Design trends is to go towards quartz or quartzite, and it's, it's more expensive than granite these days. Oh, wow. And let me just and ask it's funny, you, you go to a oh go ahead. go ahead no please go ahead well you go looking for stone slabs and you can go to maybe six places and only two of them have good selections of granite because everyone else is carrying the quartz wow and quartzite all right good to know just a quick question when it comes to your custom cabinetry work that you help people renovate their kitchens with just to confirm when you have a custom cabinet uh, cabinetry system put in or kitchen renovation your appliances should be even with your uh, cabinets right because like in my house they stick out they're clearly not custom and that bothers me greatly you know what i mean like the oven sticks out more the microwave sticks out more it's so icky looking (laughs) It, it well because so that's because you have a microwave that's above your stove. Is that it? Yes, correct. Mm-hmm. Yes. So now we tend to do microwave drawers. So oh. they're in a drawer in the cabinet so that they don't stick out or they don't. And then your your range top is always going to be a little bit deeper than your counters. It's going to have to stick out a little bit. But now they have something called a counter depth refrigerator, which is more in line with the count, the, the 25, 26 inch of the counter so that it doesn't stick out. You have the traditional very deep refrigerator, and it sticks out probably a lot from everything else. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um, Most of the designs we're doing now are counter-depth refrigerators, so they don't stick out. Oh, good. Now, it does give you a lot less space, but you don't lose things in the back of it. Got it. Because it's shallow. All right. So you're not finding science experiments in the back of your refrigerator. <laughs> Good one. <laughs> and, oh, right. I love it. I love it. So would you say there's some, you know, kitchen materials or appliances and style that you think have some staying power? And what are some that uh, are just must-haves that maybe just now <laughs> people regretting that they did use? Well, so kids, you still want a microwave drawer is, is fabulous. That was the best invention they ever came out with because now it's a drawer – you don't have to see it up top, and it looks, you know, you can just have nice cabinetry up top. I think that's here to stay and will always stay. Um, and then in terms of cooktops, you know, I think people are, te- if you're a real big cook and you want double ovens, I see more and more people going for a cooktop and double ovens because they feel that having one of those big 48, you know, inch ranges and bending over all the time. Um, and having to pull things out from, you know, bending over and opening up the oven. Um, I'm finding a lot of people are saying, you know what, I'd even want double oven side by side. I don't want to have to bend over. A big thing coming into play now are steam ovens, and, um, which are amazing. Um, I wish I could redo my kitchen and get a steam oven. It's, it's phenomenal the way it cooks and reheats leftovers like you just made them. So those are some of the appliance type things that are happening. Most people are moving towards a counter depth refrigerator and then maybe having a second refrigerator somewhere else just to, for overflow, um, putting in a lot of beverage centers under the counter, 
um, or creating a separate little bar area where there's a beverage center, especially for young kids to keep them out of your, so they're not opening the big refrigerator all the time, putting their, their drinks and stuff into a separate refrigerator is always key. Wow. See, I'm thinking little wine refrigerator, but you mean like a real little refrigerator. Yes. Ah, I didn't even realize that yeah, even existed. Yeah, it's actually more than a wine refrigerator. So a wine refrigerator only goes to a certain, it's not a refrigerator, it just cools your oh, wine. Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. But if you, did a, if you did a refrigerator that can also hold like your white wine and hold, um, I have some that actually make ice but then can hold some drinks. It's more of, they call it a beverage center. So it's a, you can actually put milk in there and would be at temperature. Um, people are starting to do that, and especially with kids because they just don't want them constantly opening the refrigerator. This way that they have their drinks and their stuff in one area. And it's great for entertaining. Oh, all right. Thanks for that. Wow. Also learning new things. And trend-wise, uh, let me just ask quickly about um, color. So you're saying lighter cabinets, right? And are there countertops lighter now, too? Is that just something that I'm noticing, like white on white? Or yeah. Like, yeah, okay. It's sort of a lot of <laughs> – you're seeing a lot of white on white. Um, it is. I mean, the gray is tending to go out, um, maybe a gray island, but definitely white in the perimeter cabinets. A big trend now is your upper and lower cabinets to be different colors. And, again, trends are not – I would, don't always say go to, go with the trend because it is trendy. Um, but I think you are seeing a ton of cabinetry that is light with a light countertop just because it gives a very peaceful look. And then you can accessorize with, like, um, a red mixer or a green mixer or a copper mixer or something on the counter that kind of gives it its pizzazz. Or if you really want, your backsplash can have some color and pizzazz or, to, again, stay neutral. Got because it. you're only going to do your kitchen once every, like, 20 years. Yeah. So then- you want to know that it's neutral and it can transcend time and that you're going to love it. And same for the backsplash as well. You don't want nothing too crazy, too yeah. wacky, right? <laughs> you really don't want to get too crazy. And also one of the things is people look at these pictures and they love it, and it's a marble backsplash. And I said, that's great, except please understand, you're going to spill spaghetti sauce or, you know, you're going to spill on that backsplash and get stuff on there. you got to wipe it down because it will etch if it's marble. So, you know, people think, oh, I didn't think about it. So you'll want to think about your backsplash. It's got to be as durable as your counter because, you, you know, if you're cooking a lot and baking and stuff, you're going to splash stuff on there, and it's you know you got to make sure to be able to clean it off. Great. Well, thank you for enlightening us today. And to wrap it up, uh, what else did you want to share before we go? We have a minute left, Susan. Uh, and again, we want to make sure we're contacting you. So absolutely. So anybody can reach out to me at susan at susancorvo dot com or my phone number two zero three five three six zero seven one two. Um, even over the phone and face in a FaceTiming, I can tell you whether your kitchen is has to be something that we're really going to be gutting or if it's something we can just reface, resurface, repaint and, and give you a fresh look. And I'm always open to receiving phone calls to have that discussion before you get to the next step and, and here to help people um, design their perfect dream kitchen. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for being here. We appreciate it. And looking forward to the next time we speak. Susan, have a great day. And thank you to all of our yes. listeners. Really got me thinking about redoing my kitchen now, too. Have a great day. Mm-hmm.